you've got four drills uh, going, even even in the in, in the rainy season, the wet season, which is remarkable. Yeah. And you're looking at a, at a fist. How are you managing to do that? Just technically, how does that work? Well, I mean, basically, we planned hard for it. We knew that we need a lot of uh, good skilled labor to mine these rigs. And so we've consistently added to our team. And the Malians are very skilled at this. We actually run this company for six months remotely. And they have delivered to the T and attracted bonuses for doing exactly what we expected them to do. So it's a very skilled team that we've got down there and the technical team with the addition of David Redden and um, Greg Eisner have also not kept the eyes off the ball so we have periodic I mean we receive daily locks of drilling and we know every day what each drill is doing wherever on the project and it's so flat a structure that anybody on the technical team can chime in if they want this to keep going they want it to stop. It's up to debate very quickly. So it's more hands-on there. And um, essentially, we also basically make sure that we uh, delegate a lot of responsibility to them. They're free to take the actions they deem fit. And we explain, it gets explained to us in our weekly calls, which have now been increased to two weekly technical sessions. So there's lots of eyeballs on this. And um, we're excited about what we've seen. We're excited about the new targets we are drilling. And we hoping, because I think the current valuation of this company um, is just reflective of one discovery. And we work working hard to change that okay, so very you, quickly. So you were, talk, you were talking um, earlier in the year, in, in June, so I guess a couple of months ago. Everything feels longer these days, Nana, everything. Um, so yeah. you, you're talking about expanding the drill program up to 45,000 metres. So talk to me about some of the numbers, okay? Because you've had some good hits. What are, what are you seeing uh, and like, what do you know about um, the drill program in terms of the way that you're planning it out over the next 12 months? Well, I mean, like I said, we got um, aside Southern Mankuki, which the market knows very well. We've got some interesting hits, or we started actually with a very interesting hits from uh, the central Mankuki zone. So the whole Mankuki is an eight kilometer mineralized corridor. And I'm not suggesting that the whole eight kilometers is all mineralized, but we think there are some jewels in there. So we're doing a lot of work in that corridor and we got drills 10 and there. We got work also ongoing in another permit, which is actually our larger permit that has a bit of artisanal activity in there, Niala, which we wait in to see uh, results, but quite a bit of drilling has been completed on that as well. We got um, the ground that we uh, acquired from Comet, which we thought was a very strategic acquisition because it gave us more ground on a structural corridor up to 20 kilometers, very close to the targets that Oklo is working on. And that's, uh, you could even see potential extension of some of their targets into that ground. And we've got rigs turning on these targets as well. Tell me, so tell me more about this one. Been... This, that's interesting. Tell me more about this. So you're so tell me about the Comet deal. What was the thinking behind this? What, what were you hoping to achieve? Well, I mean, basically, we're constantly looking at ways to expand our footprint. And the more um, land that you can accumulate, the better. And we had done a back, desk, I mean, a, a desktop study with our technical team that had a, a established a structural corridor train that runs from Cerebaya which has about close to 400,000 ounces at two grams, delineated already, running through our southern Mankuki into central Mankuki, running through Candioli and further going up. And the most extreme portion, we already had a, 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 perm, a permit, which we had drilled, which gave some interesting numbers, about 35 grams over two meters that warranted follow-up. So we quickly knew the importance of that corridor and our due diligence on basically the work that had been done on the zone that had already drilled and delineated as a resource made us aware that this was extremely shallow drilling, that's 60 meter vertical depth. And there were a few 
I mean, trench, high grade trench results that were not followed up. Very promising AC results like eight grams over 40 meters that were never followed up. So the opportunity to grow the existing resource, which was actually calculated at 1350 gold price, was high. And then further doing our Google S due diligence, we actually saw that essentially the artisanal activity had expanded the footprint that was there. So we know for a fact that we onto something there and it looks like some of the deep structures on the Oklo ground is coming into that. And um, it's an interesting and exciting times, I would say. But that begs the question, why, why, did, why, why, why uh, we will stay tuned, um, but why didn't Oklo step in? They had some data as well. I think I think that would be a, be a question better suited for them, but it's like in a competitive uh, region, so we saw the opportunity and we jumped in as quickly as possible for it.